Well, it's nice to be back after a, a break for a bout with COVID. And uh, I'm glad to have another story for you today. Have you ever been in one of these old graveyards and seen these tall gravestones? You wonder why they are. Why are they so tall? Uh, I was visiting in a little place called Dreghorn in Scotland, and they had a rather unusual church. It was what they called a Thrupney Bit Church, um, kind of like our old Nichols. It was, um, I think, an octagon. And uh, I walked about the graveyard, and I saw these extra tall stones, and then I realized the reason for it. Couples uh, who would marry and have a place for their family to be buried uh, had so many children that predeceased them. And so on the gravestone, there would be John, you know, two months, and then Mary, such a date, and so on. And they might have three, four, five children before uh, that would predecease the parents, many of them in infancy. And uh, this was a very common thing in those days. And uh, my great-grandparents on my mother's side uh, came from Scotland and settled in Montreal in the um, late 1800s. And in 1891, there was a severe epidemic of scarlet fever and diphtheria that swept across Montreal, and I think 10,000 children died during that time. And there were three that died in my great-grandmother's home. Mary, who was age seven, and Rachel, between two and three, and Maggie, one. And little Richard had died some time previous. My aunt uh, Helen was given up for dead at the time. Uh, she went on to live to old age. But it was such a terrible tragedy, three little children in one week. Mary, the oldest of the children, uh, was a very mature believer at age seven. She was very conscious of spiritual things. And uh, in fact, on her deathbed, as she was dying, she quoted the words of Mary Shackleton's hymn, It passeth knowledge, that dear love of thine, Lord Jesus, Savior, yet this soul of mine would of thy love in all its breadth and length its height and depth, its everlasting strength, no more and more. My grandfather said that when she would come down the stairs in the morning before she took ill to help her mother get breakfast ready for the large family, she would go to the window and push back the drapes, look out into the morning sun and say, do you think he'll come today, mommy? You know, there are a lot of people who have theological positions, but they don't grip their hearts. It doesn't change their life. The scripture says, he that has this hope in him purifies himself, even as he is pure. In other words, I should be able to tell if your eschatology is right by the way you live. Does it affect how you live? And unfortunately, this is one of the things that we see in church history, that there was a generation of Christians who rediscovered this truth of the imminent return of Christ, and it radicalized their lives. They sold off their estates. They auctioned off their silver and their tapestries, and they went off to the mission field. They didn't sit around waiting for the Lord to come, as is often the charge against those who hold a pre-trib position. They, they engaged themselves. They occupied until he came. And this is what the scripture says. This is uh, Titus 2, verse 13 and 14. Looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. If I really believe the Lord is coming back soon, I won't waste any time. I'll be busy in his business. I will be occupying until he comes. So this is a false argument. People who went out with that great thrust of missionary enterprise with uh, Anthony Norris Groves and others, went to Persia, went to India, 
spread all over the world preaching the gospel. Uh, Dr. Bedeker in Russia and so on. Fred Stanley Arnold in Africa. Who were these people? They were people who had been gripped with the reality that the Lord Jesus was coming back soon. And they went out to get the job done. But uh, the next generation who believed in the pre-trib rapture were empire builders. They were building great seminaries and schools and publishing books, and no one took them seriously. And so if, if we are going to lay hold of this idea that the Lord's coming is soon, then it should be evidenced in our lives that there's no time to waste, that now is the day of salvation, and we should be occupying, we should be busy until we hear the shout. May the Lord encourage us all to renew our vision, to renew our hope. This ain't heaven. <laughs> you don't need to look around much to realize that. But this is our mission field, and we are here only until the Lord gives the shout and calls us away. So may we have the spirit of little Mary and look out into the morning and say, Lord, is today the day? Because one of these days will be that day and we will be out of here. And in the meantime, God help us to be busy until we hear the shout.